listen, I'm tired. It's been a long week. There were two scrubbed launches. Let's just look at some pretty pictures of space. Welcome back to Space According to Skylar. I'm Skylar, I'm an astrophysics PhD student, and today we are going to be tier ranking the astronomy pictures of the day from the month of August. Now this is episode two of this tier ranking series. I will be doing a new one every month and I did one for July, so go check that out. If you're not familiar or you haven't seen that one, Astronomy Picture of the Day is a website that NASA runs where it's exactly what it sounds like. Every single day they post a new astronomy picture. Oh my god, realize that my camera was slightly tilted for that whole thing. I'm not gonna refilm it. <laughs> the astronomy pictures of the day are all beautiful. They are not only just from like NASA projects, they're often from photographers from around the world. And I think that tier ranking is a fun way to go through and talk about them. So let's start by going over our tiers. Lowest tier, scrubbed launch. Now, listen, listen, this is my standard disclaimer. If I put something in the bottom tier, A, it's just my opinion, and B, it doesn't mean it's bad. And that is true for scrub launches. We had two this past week from Artemis 1, and these scrub launches are really important to teach us where the potential points of failure are and make sure things are safe going forward. So I thought it was a good name for a bottom tier because it's obviously not necessarily the best thing to happen, but like, it doesn't mean that it's the worst thing ever. Just above that we have moon pics. I noticed last month I ended up putting a lot of pictures of the moon in lower tiers. Listen, I love the moon. I just see a lot of pictures of it. So previously I called this tier neat, but seen it, it's kind of like that. Right in the middle we have double take. You know, you look at it and you're like, oh wait, oh that's kind of cool. That's what we're going for. Moving up we have obsessed. That's very self-explanatory. I'm obsessed. And at the very top, we have jaw dropping. I, the, the best. I got, I got pretty much nothing to add, just beautiful. So with our tiers established, let's get into it. The order of the pictures is randomized, so they're not necessarily in chronological order, um, just as a heads up. <laughs> okay, this first one is kind of fun. It's called the Pac-Man Nebula. Um, you can see that Pac-Man shape, right? The lighter colors. Um, I've actually never seen the Pac-Man Nebula before, and I think because it's kind of new, I'm gonna I'm gonna put it at the top of the double take. Nebulas like the Pac-Man Nebula here are regions where stars are being formed. So there are a bunch of stars being formed here currently. Their light is illuminating the gas and dust clouds that surround it, and it does so in these patterns, and it just happens to kind of look like Pac-Man. That's pretty fun. Ooh, uh, I love reflections. This might go in obsessed. I don't know, this is really cool. I think, I think I'm putting it in obsessed. So there's a lot going on in this picture. Um, the mirror, the telescope here is called magic and it is something that is actually detecting particles in Earth's atmosphere that are moving really, really fast. So it's not going to be looking at what's reflected here, but what's reflected here is so pretty. You have the Milky Way and then you actually also have meteors in the background from the Perseid meteor shower. Yeah, I think, I think Obsessed is a good category. This is really cool. Moving on, we have the Eagle Nebula. Ooh, lots of nebulas. I think this is also going in double take. It's really pretty. I'm not necessarily obsessed because I see a lot of nebulas, but it's pretty enough where it's not in moon pics. The eagleness I think comes from you've got the little head and then the wings spread out kind of on a diagonal. This is another star forming region. This entire thing is about 70 light years across meaning it takes 70 years for light to get from one side to the other. So it's a very large structure, it's forming stars, it's pretty, yeah, the middle category. Okay, next up we have Mimas, which is a moon of Saturn, and it looks like the Death Star. But this picture doesn't do a good job of showing that, so I'm putting it in moon pics out of protest. Mimas has this giant crater on it, and so this is the astronomy picture of the day image, but here is also an image of Mimas where you can see how it looks like the Death Star. I believe the big crater is called Herschel Crater. Like, it's a, it's a very cool thing, and if they showed the full thing so it looked like the Death Star, I would definitely rank it higher. But if you're gonna crop it like that, sorry, it's going in moon pics. 
Okay, next up we have another nebula. And I'm just gonna continue to put these in double take because they're gorgeous pictures, but there's so many of them. This is a part of what is called the North American Nebula, specifically a structure called the Cygnus Wall. That's that right line through the middle of the picture. This is a region with a bunch of new stars, gas, dust. I've talked about nebulas already. There's not much more to say here. You know, I'm sure that people who actually study star formation and nebulas would be very upset about how I'm, you know, talking about how these are all the same, but like, to some extent they are. <laughs> Sorry. Okay, up next we have a meteor shower. Um, it's a cool picture. I'm, I'm putting it in moon pics though. I don't know, I think most ground-based images like this I'm not as interested in. Uh, this is taken over Tunisia, shows a meteor shower, shows the Milky Way. Certainly pretty, but you know, you, there's, a, there's a lot of pictures of the sky from the ground. <laughs> Speaking of, here is another image from the ground. This is a kind of wide angle image, so that makes the Milky Way seem curved. Now, if you're actually observing it from the ground, it would look more like a plane because we are on the edge looking into it. But if you kind of go wide angle and distort the image, you get this really cool little archway. Um, it's a pretty image. Again, I'm, I'm putting it in moon pics. I've seen stuff like this before. I'm sorry. <laughs> I need to stop apologizing. This is my tier ranking. If I don't like this image as much, so be it. Okay, we've got more meteor showers, this time in Spain. I think this is a bit of a castle, and I think this one is kind of underwhelming, so it's it's gonna be our first scrub launch of the day. Ooh, okay, this is kind of cool. I think it's cool enough to go and double take. Um, this is a very long-term project tracking Saturn as it moves through the night sky. Now Saturn, like most planets, change their positions pretty frequently. That is where the word planet comes from, the Greek for wanderers. These were objects that changed where they were more than the other stars. And so this is actually showing that. This is showing the entire path that Saturn takes as it orbits around the sun when we can see it from Earth over the course of several decades. And I think that's kind of cool to actually see how much it moves laid out. If you look closely, you'll notice that there are some of these images of Saturn that look a little bit brighter, and that actually has to do with the orientation of the rings relative to Earth, because if the rings are faced more towards Earth, you have more of that reflective surface area, and so the planet as a whole will seem brighter. So yeah, all of that, I think I'm putting it in the double take category. Up next, we have another nebula. <sighs> okay. This one's still pretty. This is part of the Carina Nebula, um, which you might remember as the nebula that JWST took a picture of a different region of it. Um, this is a pretty image. I'm gonna put it kind of in the middle of the double take, AKA the nebula category. What you're looking at here is again, just more new star formation. The caption of this image really wants to highlight the fact that in a lot of nebulas, you have stars against dust where the dust wants to kind of clump together, but the stars are creating winds that will blow the dust apart. And in the Carina Nebula here, the stars are going to win. Within a few million years, those big dust columns and structures are gonna get kind of blown apart by the new stars that were formed there, and you're gonna lose this kind of image. Okay, next up we have a comet tail. Uh, I'm, I'm putting it in moon pics. It's, it's kind of interesting. Uh, this is looking at kind of the gas and dust and ions that come off a comet as it gets closer to the sun and its surface gets heated up. But it, as an image, it's not that spectacular, I don't think. Ooh, okay, I actually really like this one. I think I'm gonna put it up in Obsessed. Now, what we are looking at here is an image of a pulsar. A pulsar is just a neutron star, which is typically a supernova remnant that's spinning really, really fast. This is called the Crab Pulsar. It's in the middle of the Crab Nebula, which looks like this. And the Crab Pulsar is spinning 30 times a second. Now, what makes this image really cool is that it's combining data in a whole bunch of different wavelengths. There is X-ray, infrared, and visible light taken into account in this image, so you can build this really cool composite showing what different things in the area are doing. This means this is a very highly false color image. Uh, the purple is visible light ranges, blue is x-ray, and red is infrared. But of course, to our eyes, you wouldn't be able to see that x-ray and infrared light, so you wouldn't see any of those blue and red colors. 
So it's kind of arbitrarily mapped, but it's still really interesting to see how all of the material is behaving around this star that is spinning so fast. Okay, next up we have yet another meteor and another Milky Way image. I'm getting... It's not necessarily any better or worse than the other ones, but just because I'm getting frustrated with these pictures, I'm putting it in a scrub launch. It, like, this one could also be down. Well, let's do this. There we go. Oh, up next we have a JWST picture. This is of the Cartwheel Galaxy. Oh. Is it lame to put all JWST pictures up in jaw-dropping? Oh, I really want to. Mm, I'm doing it. Okay, so the Cartwheel Galaxy is actually a really neat system of galaxies. You can see there's a couple little companion galaxies on the side, but if we look at that main big one, what you're looking at here is what happens after a small galaxy passes through the center of a large one. Essentially, a bunch of the outer layers got pushed away, forming the edge of that wheel, and you have kind of a tighter central galaxy in the middle with spokes connecting. And with the infrared light that JWST is sensitive to, we can see a lot more detail and a lot more of those spokes. It's just a really fun looking structure. It kind of looks like a jellyfish, maybe? I don't know, but I really like it. Oh, moon pick! Perfect! <laughs> we know where that's going. This one is a little bit more interesting because it's showing the Tiangong space station, Ch the Chinese space station, crossing over the moon. It was taken from Australia, but it's a moon picture. Oh, this next one's kind of cool. I think I'm going to put it up in the double take category. So this is an image taken from the South Pole, and it's essentially kind of focused looking straight down. So that little circle you see is just this circle of ground on the horizon and then the sky on either side with the aurora coming off that dividing line. I really like auroras, you know this about me, so it's gonna move it up a little bit. Oh my god, we have another nebula. This is getting ridiculous. Can we be a little bit more creative here? You know what, that's very unfair. Nebulas are some of the prettiest things to take images of <laughs> and these are all very different and they're all very pretty. So, you know, maybe they could all be in Obsessed instead of Double Take, but we're in too deep now. So this is called the Cocoon Nebula. It's another star forming nebula and it's actually undergone some very recent star formation. That bright star in the center is probably only a few hundred thousand years old, which in stellar lifetimes is very, very young. Our sun is going to live to be around 10 to 11 billion years. So anything in the thousands, that's a baby star. Okay, you know what? I'm, I'm moving a nebula up. This is the horse head nebula. Can you, can you tell why? Because you see the little horse head. Uh, this is a pretty famous nebula because it's got that really interesting dust column structure. Uh, it's a pretty picture. And there's a very funny meme about the horse head nebula, which I'm gonna share now. Because the detail of JWST images, <laughs> get it? Okay. It is worth noting that in this image, most of the stars have been removed. So there's a lot more stars, typically, if you were to look at this, than you can actually see here. So they're trying to just highlight the gas and dust structures, but there are, of course, stars as well. What do you know? Another moon picture. Although this one is actually quite lovely, so I think I'm going to put it at the head of the moon pictures. Um, this is a cloud over the moon. Now this is kind of fun, not only because the moon kind of looks like Saturn, but because the moon is actually not full in this image. It's actually a crescent moon. You can see that bottom part is really brightly illuminated. That's the crescent. The rest of it is lit up by the Earth. So it is kind of a cool reminder that the moon is primarily lit up by the sun, but there is also light reflected off of the Earth that can then bounce off the moon and back. Oh, we have another JWST picture, and this one for sure is going up and jaw dropping because it is an image of Jupiter. And I love this picture. You can see all sorts of things, including Jupiter's rings, the auroras on the north and south poles of Jupiter, several moons. It's just a really pretty picture. So it's, it's going at the top here. Next up, we have a picture from the Martian surface. And I'm going to be honest, I don't really care that much. It's going in scrubbed launch. If you're a geologist, you would probably find something like this fascinating, but I'm not a geologist. Oh, I think next one's going up and jaw dropping. This is another nebula, but it's one of my favorite nebulas. 
the Cat's Eye Nebula. And if you look at the central region, you can see that there are some really beautiful structures. But what the astronomy picture of the day image is, is of the outer layers of the nebula. So you see those beautiful structures inside, but you also see the halo continues out past that. Now what's kind of interesting about this is we're not entirely sure what causes all of these structures. It's one of the many unknowns in astronomy, but these pictures sure are gorgeous. Next up, we have a globular cluster called M13. This is just a big, giant region of hundreds to thousands of stars that all formed at the same time and are traveling around the galaxy together. It's... it's moon pics. Uh, maybe we'll put it at the tail end of double take actually. It, I really do love seeing especially globular clusters through telescopes because when you're looking at a region of sky like this and you see just how many stars there are, it's kind of mind-blowing. And so that's going to kind of move this up to actually contemplate how many stars you're looking at in this image. Next up we have another nebula. It is also going in with all of the other nebulas. This one is called the Trifid Nebula. There are a lot of different things going on in this nebula, so that kind of reddish light is light being emitted by hydrogen atom. The blue light is starlight bouncing off of dust, and then the dark regions are dust blocking the light from the background. We sometimes call these dark nebula. It's, it's, it's cool to see all of those different things, but it's just another nebula. Next up we have Phobos, one of the moons of Mars. It looks like a potato. Mm. This is an image that's designed to like wear blue and red light glasses so you can see some more 3D effects, but it's, it's just a rock. Okay, the next one's kind of fun. This is Andromeda, a large spiral galaxy that's the closest large galaxy to us. And that green line you see is actually a meteor. So meteors are little bits of rock that are burning up in our atmosphere, so you're seeing here light that's being emitted in our atmosphere, and then also light from Andromeda, which is two million light years away. I think that change of perspective is pretty cool, so I'm gonna put it up at the top of Double Take. Maybe at the bottom of Obsessed. I like Andromeda. She's really pretty. <laughs> and then to wrap it up, because apparently that is the theme of August, we have another nebula. This one is called the Lagoon Nebula. Once again, they removed a lot of the stars from it. It's, it's going in with all the other nebulas. It's pretty, it's a nebula. All right, so there you have it. Here is my final tier ranking. You can see it is very heavily weighted in the middle. Um, I think because of all the nebulas. August was a big month for nebulas, apparently. We've got a couple JWST pictures in the top tier, which should come as a surprise to nobody who knows how much I love all of the images we're getting from JWST. There were also several really interesting videos in the August set of pictures of the day. I'm not putting videos in here, but if you're interested, you should definitely go check them out because there's a lot you can learn from the videos as well as the images. Just like last time, I will be putting a link to the tier maker down below so you can go play around with it if you're interested, as well as a link to the astronomy picture of the day. I will be doing this again in September so you can go look through, decide how you would rank them, and then see what I do. As always, if you enjoyed this video, please let me know. Give me a like, subscribe, ring the bell, comment. Is that everything? I think that's everything. Do the YouTube things, please. I hope you have a fantastic week, and I will see you next time. Bye!